Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be opening up the EG4 indoor head unit and I'm going to show you how to do a bit of a basic maintenance. We're going to be focusing on the coil, the blower wheel, and the drain. Hopefully most of you are still in good shape as these things are less than a year old. As you can see, we've got another bright and sunny day here in Canada. This thing has been running all day long, but we're going to get it shut down, opened up, and I'll show you how to take a, a bit of preventative maintenance action to keep this thing running good. So. First of all, we're going to want to stop the swing. You want to stop your louvers at about the highest position you can. Um, and then I like to take the AC and turn the cooling off and put it into fan only mode. Just so when we cut off the power, we're not stopping the compressor too abruptly. It's already shut down. We're just taking the power away from the unit and killing the fan. So being a ductless mini split, these do require a bit more maintenance than your average central AC. I know when I put my first few videos up, a lot of people said, oh, you're going to have issues with those. Ductlesses stink. They get plugged up. They, uh, they cause a mess. But it honestly depends on how you take care of it. And it has a lot to do with your indoor air quality and how clean your house is. Sorry to say it, if you have a dirty house, you're going to have a lot of trouble with ductless. Now we want to shut the power off for two reasons. One, for safety. Two, we have to stop the louvers in the open position. So just give the unit a couple minutes after shutdown before you really dig in. Now the reason we need the louvers open while this thing is off is so we can access these screws down here in the front. And there's also a tab in the middle of the louver we need to be able to get to to get it out. So we're going to start by opening up the faceplate on this. This is where your filters are. Hopefully you already know that. You should be checking these at least once a month. I've only had to wash them one time so far in the seven months I've been using this AC, but you should keep a close eye on them. If you've got a good, clean indoor air quality, you shouldn't have too many issues. I run my main furnace fan 24-7 with a big 5-inch Merv 11 filter, so I don't see a lot of dust buildup in these filters. But if you have a lot of pets, you live near the beach, you have a dusty environment, you're going to want to check these often. Now, if you pull your filters and your coil is nice and clean like mine is, there's really no need to go any further than this at the moment. But for the sake of the video, I'm going to tear this thing down and show you what to do if you do have a dirty coil. If you take these apart and you see a big dust buildup, you'll know right away. So all you're really going to need here is a Phillips and a flathead. Now, at the front of the unit with the lid up, you're going to see four screws. This one on the electrical panel, three across the front, and I'll show you the other two in a minute. We'll start with these ones and get it taken apart. Now we need to disconnect a few of these wires before the faceplate can come off. This is your indoor temp sensor and this cable goes to the LCD display. So we just need to unclip these from the unit so we can pass it through as we remove the face. We're not actually going to unplug anything here. So after you get this display taken off, you can just let it hang. You can unplug it here, but there's really no need to. Uh, we just need to unclip it from the door. And then as we pull the faceplate off, these can just pass right through. So we'll move on to these screws. You just need a flathead to lift these little covers. And then it's a standard Phillips screw inside. This is the center connection for the louver. So you just need to pop that over to the right and the louver will be loose. Then you just need to put a bit of a bend in the louver and you can actually unhook it from the stepper motor here that controls the swing and the left side just pulls right out of this hole. Now with the louver out of the way, we can take out these bottom screws and this is what we're left with. So everything is disconnected at this point. So the first thing you want to do is come up here to the top and pull up and back on these little tabs. These are basically just little hooks that hold the top of the faceplate on. You just want to unclick them, pull them all back a little bit from the wall and make sure you have a little bit of a gap. Now once you have all these top tabs disconnected, move down to the bottom, pull out and up, and it should come towards you. Now just watch those tabs on the gray drain pan. Give everything a bit of a tug, a bit of a wrestle, and it should come free. Now you're just going to have to pass the wiring and the LCD through. I'm going to set you down. And there's the shroud all disconnected. 
Now at this point you can take a really good look at your indoor coil. You want to check the top and the back as well as the front. Mine's in really good shape so I don't need to do anything at the moment but if yours is dirty you want to start with a dry brush kit. I'll put a link below to an Amazon one or you can use a simple paintbrush if you have one. You just want to work down the face of the coil really gently not making any side to side movements to damage the fins. Um, you could also use coil cleaner. It'll just run down the face into the pan but at this point you shouldn't need coil cleaner. With the indoor assembly all opened up, this is a good time to check out your blower wheel. Your blower wheel is probably where you're going to find the most dust. As you can see on mine, I do have a little bit of a dust buildup, and if you don't address it now, it's going to be an issue in about six months to a year. You're going to have to pull this whole thing apart, and it's not fun. So use a brush from the Amazon kit or a paintbrush like this one. Just take your time, be patient. You can clean up most of this dust with a dry brush. Um, it'll just fall out the bottom. Next time you turn it on, it'll shoot a bunch of dust out at you, but... It's really important you do this before it gets too bad, otherwise it builds up and you have to pull the whole blower wheel and it's really not fun. I will sort of show you how to do that. Now be careful of these little louvers here, they're pretty cheap. You can take them off, but I'm going to leave them in place because they're pretty brittle. I don't want to risk breaking one of the tabs off them. Now if the dust on your blower wheel gets too severe, you have to actually separate this coil from the drain pan. It's not a really fun job to do by yourself, but basically the blower rides on this little bearing assembly, so you have to take all those screws out, lift up on the coil, and you'll have to come over here, and there's usually a missing fan blade that you can disconnect the blower wheel from the motor. If there's not, it's even worse, but this one does have one. So you would have to undo that from the hub, go back over here, have this whole coil loose, and lift up that left side, and pull the blower wheel out, take it outside, wash it. It's a lot easier if you stay ahead of it. It's, uh, it's honestly not a fun job, but... It's also a good time to have a look at your drain. I was in a big rush when I installed this thing and I didn't switch the drain to the appropriate side. So mine drain actually runs across the whole back of the unit and out the hole in the wall. I could have drained it on this side, but I didn't. Not a huge deal because I'm gonna be, uh, you know, keeping up on my maintenance, but if you don't keep up on the maintenance, that drain can get sludgy and cause blockages. It can cause a leak in your, uh, in your indoor space and obviously you don't want that. That's our little stepper motor that controls the louvers. Our circuit board is behind that panel there. Overall, once again, a very standard mini split. So depending on what side you hooked your drain to, this is where my drain actually exits the pan into the line. So it's a good idea to dump a bit of vinegar down here, maybe some hot water. You could also use some pan and drain treatment from a company like New Calgon or Viper. I'll put links to all that below. Once you've done the drain line, the blower wheel, and the coil, you're pretty much done. So I'm going to show you how to get it back together and we'll fire it back up. This is a little tough to film with one hand. I probably should have invested in some type of a head mount, but basically you just put the unit back on, you get everything lined up, give it a good push in the middle, and with any luck you'll hear a few clicks. And before you lock everything into place and start putting the screws back in, you need to make sure your wires are all routed back through the front. Get your temp sensor lined up where it's supposed to be and put the panel back in place and screw it on. The louver goes in exactly the same way you took it out. You want to start with the far side, line up your middle tab here, and then once again, you need to put a little bit of a bend in the louver to get it short enough to go over the stepper motor. Just be careful with all this stuff. Um, as this plastic ages, it just gets more and more brittle. So every time you do this, you have to be a little bit more careful. If your filters weren't too dirty, you can probably just brush them off or use an air compressor to blow the dust out of them. If they were dirty, give them a good wash. Make sure they're nice and dry before you put them back in. Not that it's going to hurt anything, but just so you don't cause any mold, any water stuck where it shouldn't be.
And that's about it. Give your wires one last check before you close the lid and pinch anything. Like I said, that's your indoor temp sensor. When you start the AC and you see the indoor temperature, that's where it's getting the reading from. So you want that to be in a good location so it's reading accurately and the AC is going to work properly. Then just check the faceplate, the shroud, make sure there's no gaps around the wall. You have everything back in its place. Click these little screw covers back into place and you're pretty much good to turn the power back on. I still have mine hooked up to this extension cord because I got a couple more videos coming for you on different ways to run this thing. Now when you turn the power back on, that louver should automatically close. It's going to take a couple minutes to uh, reset, set it to your normal temperature, and it should kick on within about three to four minutes. And about four minutes later, the indoor head unit came back on, solar icon is lit, and we're pumping out a nice 50 degree air. Indoor temperature is about 72 right now, so things are once again working great. Um, like I said, it's important to stay on top of this stuff. If you let that blower wheel get away from you, you'll find generally the AC just isn't putting out uh, the air. It's not moving enough air, therefore the compressor ramps down. It actually thinks the coil temperature is too cold and it goes into basically a limp mode. It'll still run, but the performance will be really terrible. So um, it's important to stay on top of this stuff. There's lots of products out there to help you maintain it. There's coil cleaner, there's drain and pan treatments. There's little tabs you can get for the mini split drains. I think they do a decent job. So I'll put a couple of those links down below if you want to get any of those products to uh, make it a little easier to maintain. But as always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.